that really would all depend on the portable plasma cutter, correct? Right. Yeah. It depends on what you call portability. Exactly. You take uh, the extreme into consideration. This is probably the most uh, portable and versatile plasma cutter you can get. You can get but um, it goes up to up to three eighths. Three eighths, and we say that it can sever half inch. So if you really need to sever half inch, you can do it. So there you go. It can go all the way up to a half inch, uh, and that is probably the best uh, porty plasma cutter on the market right now. Well, first and foremost, you do have to understand that your tip and the electrode inside it are consumable products. Uh, they're never going to last forever. Uh, but one thing you can do is uh, don't hit your tip to your metal. You want to keep it at roughly about a sixteenth, no more than an eighth inch away from your metal. Um, move pretty quickly and try not to double arc it. Every time you tap it on the, uh, onto the metal, there is a probability of double arcing. So um, that that's something you want to avoid, and it's it's a it's a really good idea if you have a porty plasma cutter to get into the practice of trying to keep that tip off the metal anyway. Um, yep, that's probably the, the where you see the most wear is when you actually are dragging a tip and you're getting the double arcing. Uh, but also if you have uh, moisture in your air, if you have oil in your air, uh, steel particles from the bottom of your, uh, your uh, compressor tank as well. Um, so we recommend an external filter to the systems. Um, every system has a small filter built inside that takes five micro uh, particles and larger and takes them out mm -hmm. uh, and it, fil it filtrates a little bit of the water but it's not rated for it sure so I always recommend something on the on the back end we have an inline filter we call it that doesn't automatically drain but it takes out 99.9% .9 moisture oh, that's and good. one micron one micron and larger particle and that's an attachment that goes onto the back into correct. the uh, air intake. Yep, correct. You want to get it as close to the, the system as possible uh, before it goes in. The air goes into the system. We also um, we supply what we call an RTI filter that mounts to the back of plasma systems. This system is so small that there's really any, no place to mount it, but it works just like the inline filter, but it automatically drains. It's got a float system in it, so it works oh, very, very well. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I also recommend if you've got your compressor on the other side of the shop, it's always good to if if you can put some sort of filtration system right out of when it comes out of the tank as well so because the double filtration system yep. moisture in the air and uh, particles in the air are one of the worst um, culprits in regards to uh, consumable okay. life reduction and I would assume that would uh, make your machine last longer as well yep you absolutely bet. perfect you could you can do what I would do and buy one of these guys and <laughs> get a finer, uh, a finer point and try to stay as close to the material as possible. Those are two good suggestions. Yeah, and that's that's right. The this machine does minimize it, but typically with a smaller machine like this, you're going to get some of that. Uh, sure. We we call it dross or you know slag on the bottom. Right. Um, and it's really it it's there because of uh, the thickness of material, the ampers that you have, and the speed that you're going. Right. Um, typically, you can minimize it with a uh, particular thickness in the Ampers machine you have. There is a uh, there is a, a pace at which you can go to minimize it. You're not always going to get rid of it. So, when you're cutting a quarter inch piece of steel, the faster you can go without making that arc come flying back is really where you're going to minimize it. But you're most likely going to get it. Right. If I'm cutting quarter inch with this machine, I know I'm going to get it. If I want to minimize it, I I get a 60 inch machine, cut that quarter inch much faster, and you get very little dross. Kerf, there's a couple of different um, explanations for kerf. There's a kerf width, which is the width of the cut while you're cutting, and then there's the kerf angle, and that angle uh, typically is caused because of the swirling of the uh, of the plasma that flows out like the, the, out the tip. Yep. So it's flowing in a, a clockwise direction. So you're biting into one part, and it's you know less of a bite on the other side. So you're always going to get that angle. And thinner material, it's really hard to notice it. But as you get into the thicker materials, you'll see it. So um, it really uh, you can um, you can't. Minimize you can't take it away. You basically have to go in whatever direction you're going You have a good a good side and a bad side So as you're moving in this direction as it's biting into one side and you got that straight side That's your good side and if you want that good side to be the other side you have to pull the other way So it's the direction in which you're traveling will uh, Determine the side of the kerf angle and then you just got to make sure that you know which one that you want as straight as possible So in essence, it's one of those characteristics of plasma cutting that you're always going to get um, But you just have to make sure that you know 
know the, the direction that you're traveling and what side is the good side and what side is the bad side. Good to know. I have never used anything but compressed air. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this one over to you. I know that's most it. everybody. I mean, that's a high percentage of people that use air. Um, the machines are rated for nitrogen as well. Right. Um, the advantages of nitrogen is, in, in most cases, your tips and electrodes will last a little longer because it is um, it has no moisture, no content, and sure. it burns a little bit hotter. Um, but you do lose a little bit of thickness capacity. So if I say this is a three eighths machine, when you put nitrogen into it, you may be top ending at um, three eighths instead of top ending at maybe half inch. Sure. Um, a lot of people like to. Uh, use it uh, with stainless applications, um, but you will always get um, a oxidated level. It'll right. it'll knock down some of that black oxidation sure. with nitrogen, but not completely. So either way, you're going to have uh, some cleanup uh, with air or nitrogen. Yeah, nitrogen is also more of an industrial application as well for like a dual gas system type Correct. deal. Yep. If uh, for uh, Stainless steel, aluminums, you can use multiple gases uh, in a more of an industrial uh, machine to, to completely get rid of those oxidized uh, levels of the cut. Nice. So there are some people that use uh, small bottles of nitrogen for portable applications. If you're going out to uh, cut some stainless steel sink someplace, um, instead of bringing a big compressor, you bring those small uh, containers of nitrogen. Just makes it a lot easier yeah. uh, from a portability standpoint. That's a good idea. Fantastic. Yeah.